Hello and welcome to the Opinion Art. This is Patrick Chambeshi and welcome to my YouTube channel. So Chelsea fans, you know, I'm a Chelsea fan. Uh, Chelsea fans out there, look out for more content, you know. But let's delve into our issue today. We talk Maurizio Sarri and uh, the Sarri ball and how it's just going at Chelsea and how, you know, we've kind of hit a point where a lot of people now are divided, you know, there's a section of fans that are a little bit sorry out, the others are whatever they are into and yeah, it's so at this point, you know, we now have to discuss, you know, sorry Bo, everything happening, like what's the way forward, what's what's the way forward, what, what, what is next? So we're going to talk first, uh, I think we're going to talk the disadvantages, like where is it going wrong you know and what is it is it the players that are causing is it the mentality is it uh, the coach uh, is it the board what is happening you know the use of the youth for example uh, we've seen how um, uh, Hudson and Doe and Ampadu for example have been getting really really uh, sidelined or just excluded you know recently not not really having any minutes at all and so there's a lot of things going on. We we'll also talk about the advantages of uh, Maurizio Sarri, you know, and going forward. And if he was sacked, what would it mean, you know, to show, see the image of the club, how people see it, and what money is realistically can Chelsea get, you know. So let's just get into Maurizio Sarri. First of all, I just want to point out that Maurizio Sarri is a good coach and... You know, he's a great. Uh, he's got great man management. You know, even after he moved away from uh, uh, Napoli, you don't hear a lot of players come out and say, "Oh, Sarri was bad." You know, he was doing this, was what the dressing room was toxic. You don't hear anything like that. You know, a lot of players, all the players that he managed at, at, at Napoli, you know, and at Empoli, all of them they they applaud him and they say, you know, he's a great manager. He's good. You know his style of football is great and it's always good to hear that about a manager it tells you like he knows how to handle a dressing room so when you start hearing a lot about this dressing room unrest in chelsea then you really some somehow you think it's the players that have got the problem and it's the players that have been uh causing the what is a dressing room unrest previously for with previous managers uh conte and Mourinho, you know uh, for example but what are the disadvantages of uh, Mauricio Sarri? I think the biggest disadvantage that everyone talks about is uh, is tactical inflexibility, you know. And it's this is a very big issue. This is a very big issue. I think uh, and one of the examples, you know, that we talk about with this tactical inflexibility is uh, the fact that he wants to just stick to one style, one way of playing and using this, the way in using things in the way that he's just familiar with for example the use of Jorginho in that uh, uh, dip as a dip CM something like that is not really a defensive midfielder but is is a register is there to to really control the play to really start our, our attacks from the from behind you know to really help out the back uh, fall from uh, in, in the builder play, you know, from behind, because our our play, you know, Saribo is focused on building from behind. Because you know, every time when you just put it forward, you always put it in a 50 50. And when you put it in a 50 50, you know, you have a lot of teams in, in England that are very physical and that have got a very, very tall player. So, it, when you always put it in a 50 50, you always risk losing the ball. So, I think it's, it's a very good uh, way of playing, you know, starting out from the back and building it from the back and it's beautiful and if you've seen uh from all this whole sorry both in i think one area that you cannot question that the players have really gotten is the builder from the from the back because if you see chelsea's builder from the from the back i think it's probably the second best you know in in england just behind man city the way we build out from the back you know we take it straight into uh the attacking third and it really it really works well i think where it's breaking down is when it goes into the attacking third and i want it i'll talk about this why uh we're having problems when he reached the attacking third and doing anything so you know the things i don't i think i don't really uh agree with people's perception or idea that you know 
Angolo Kante should come back in the DM role. I think he's doing uh, all right in the in his role, and he helps out a lot. You know, if you see, especially our our pressing, uh, there's a moment. I think I don't know if it's just the mentality of the Chelsea players. Like when we reach the 60th minute mark, like all our players just stop pressing. Just look at the games, especially the ones where we've lost. Like when even when we're winning, when you just reach like 60th minute, it's like everyone. It's like I don't know, it's like someone just presses the button and says stop pressing. They just stop, you know, and it's bad. You see, like, the only players that continue pressing, it's uh, N'Golo Kante and Mateo Kovacic, both of them are playing. And I, don't, I know I'm dragging on with this point, but really I want to get this uh, clear so that everybody understands. So, uh, I think Sari... His problem is, especially his in-game management. His in-game management is really poor. You know, it's like every time the substitutions that he makes is just like for like. You know, you see uh, Kovacic for Buckley. You know, you see um, uh, well, you see William for Pedro, uh, Giroud for Higuain. Like you can easily predict. You know, if there was a betting site to, to watch this, you predict the the what is the substitute that. Uh, Sari is going to make you earn a lot of money, you know, because it's very predictable and it doesn't want to change things, you know. And the thing about Sari coming out in the press conference and saying, you know, he wants to first to work to really work on Plan A, and if Plan A works, he can really uh, make twist to it. But I think it's about the in-game management. Sometimes, you know, you need to learn how to respond to a manager's tactics, because you know. Uh, managers these days are spending hours, you know, uh, analyzing how another team plays and just trying to get to know how they can counter. And when you see things like that, you need to, to sometimes in the game counter how a certain a certain team is playing against you. Like I saw uh, even against, uh, let's say, against Huddersfield. There was a period for like uh, 10 to 15 minutes when they were just coming, especially on that uh, left side um, uh, where Alonso is. They were just coming and Mauricio Sarri was just like, continue doing what I've told you, you know, just play from the back, continue my Sarri ball, like, no counter whatsoever. You saw it, uh, the, our last game against Maumo, there was a period, there were periods when Maumo were just coming, coming, coming at us, you know, they were, they, were, they were stopping us, you know, stopping our attacks, and they were just coming at us, you know, and Mauricio Sarri was just like, do what I've told you, you know, just do the same things, and there was no counter. You know, I remember... Uh, classic Jose Mourinho. There was a time we were playing man uh, Arsenal, and I remember in that game, Ozzy was playing on the wing, and uh, it was around the, like a 68th minute or something. So, and uh, I saw Arsene Wenger tells uh, Walcott to start warming up. He wanted to bring in Walcott, and the moment Jose Mourinho saw uh, Walcott warming up, he knew that when Walcott comes. Walcott will go to the wing and Ozzy will come and play more central as a number 10. So he was, because we, we literally stopped him all game when he was playing on the wing. Like he, he had no effect on the game. So he knew what Wenger was going to do. The moment he told, Wenger told uh, Walcott to go and warm up, uh, Mourinho told uh, Mikel. Mikel substitute. Mikel came in. The moment uh, what's this, this guy came in, Walcott came in and Ozzy will switch to to the center as the number 10 immediately Mourinho told Mikel go mark out uh Ozil and we just completely destroyed them and that's what we talk about when you see when you talk about in-game management it's it's needed and even if for the system sometimes you need to make a little bit of twitches you know to read you look at how Man City and Guardiola has, uh, Guardiola has evolved from these days of uh, you know Tiki Taka Barcelona you see he used to use those deep controllers like um, uh, Xavi, for example, and the guy that is still in Barcelona. I don't know if he plays a DM or a register. Uh, that's that's what, that's the players he used to use in that midfield. The players that would control the play, you know, like when he went to to what's this? When he went to Bayern, you saw him use a more a bit of a more traditional uh, DM. Some some kind of a deep line playmaker when he was using Alonso there, you know. You see him now at Man City has evolved it. You know, it's a Premier League. You know, it's a Premier League, and you're, you're suspect to a lot of counter attacks. You know, a lot of teams in the Premier League, 
you know, like this tactic of just sitting back and then go on the counter. That's why he has uh, Fernandinho in there because Fernandinho can easily do the dirty work and he's good on the ball. You know, he can ping passes. You need that. You need sometimes you need to change it. You know, at least just to get top four, change something. Sorry, you know, and so that's one of the problems with uh, Maurizio Sari. Now coming to talk about why we don't score a lot of goals and why our attack seems to be our biggest problem. I think when you look at um, the, the attacking players that we have, Hazard, William, Pedro, specifically, I think these people, th you look at all of them, what is the biggest st strength? It's carrying the ball and beating players. I mean, if, don't, don't get me wrong, I think since Sari came, we've literally seen less of combination play between William and Hazard. I think in all, whether you look at uh, Mourinho's tenure or look at Conte's tenure, Hazard and uh, William always had this swiftness about them. You know, they and it's like, it's a natural thing. They just click on, on, on a natural level. You know, you see those one-twos, they understand each other. Even when they take long on the ball, but they still know each other's movements. But how come uh, all of a sudden Maurizio Sarri comes in and there's a problem of movement? They seem to be uh, static and this, it seems like a decision making is a bit slow and everything like that. I think one thing, one way Maurizio Sarri can help our, our attackers is play the Sarri ball, you know, start from, from the back, which, is, which has become very perfect, you know, perfect at building from the back. We build from the back into the midfield. When you go into the attacking third, at least give them the freedom to express themselves. Because these players, you know, William at 30, you're not going to change William into a typical winger and you're not going to ask Hazard to become just a normal typical winger that is just going to stick on the wings and create width and then uh, every time he has the ball it's just one and then he runs the channel and uh, you ask I don't know whoever has the ball to ping it onto the horses to ping it a th a through ball and he, he runs onto it like you're not going to do that you know Hazard his strength is give him the ball on his feet he can beat three four players easily you know, give them the freedom when they're in the in that attacking third. You know, look at when Hazard came on against uh, Mao. You see what he was doing? Every time he has the boy, it's just dribble. Every time he has the boy, he just wants to take on. That's their biggest strength. You cannot change them. What you do is create something that complements these players. At least talk to the board, you know. Yes, in the summer, you want to get rid of William. You want to get rid of Pedro. For now, use them at their strength. If you just ask... Uh, William to just play a one one touch football all the time and just run into the channels, make a lot of movements. <laughs> like it's not working. Even even Pedro who was playing in a Barcelona system is not doing it. Come on, come on, like do something that relates to the players, something that these players you know can relate to, and it can really work for the players. You know, that's what I think. I think uh, I was one of these people, you know, that started thinking, like, uh, you know, Hazard is not dying a little for the team you know he's not putting a shift for the team he's not uh uh he's not moving back uh, uh enough you know and i sat down and thought about it like do you really win, want hazard to be dropping down too deep or do you want him to focus on the attack really because let's be honest about this if you look at our, our the start of the season we went on like a 12 match and beaten uh run in the Premier League alone. If you look at all of that, it's Hazard really that was bailing us out. And what was bailing us out? It is others' individual brilliance. Look at the goals that he scored. Individual class. If you give him, give him the ball, allow him to, to, to attack, allow him to do his thing, it just, it, it delivers for you. It delivers for you. It's as simple as that. But, you know, when Maurizio Sarri is trying to force these players to just play in a different kind of way that... They, they haven't played in their careers. It's 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 not easy, you know. It's not easy. And the, the one other uh, disadvantage of uh, Maurizio Sarri that you can talk about is that when you look at the youth players and uh, young players in general in the, in the team, it's like you don't see a project going on. Because if you see a project, you need to see at least maybe Ampad you get in minutes. Or if not, uh, or uh, Hudson Adoy get in minutes. At least... If not both of them, at least one of them getting uh, enough minutes in the first team. And what you're saying is, not even one of them is getting enough minutes. You know, 
at least for um, Ruben, you can you can give uh, you can make an argument that it's no, it's because of the slight injuries that he has gotten, and you know that's it is justifiable, you know. But you look at Christiansen, maybe recently has been getting minutes, but you know at the start of the season, even K was ahead of him. Like you, you're not seeing a project, and that's and you know what's supposed to make us optimistic, you know, as fans is we're supposed to be seeing a project going on and that's just a thing that we're not seeing with Sari right now is that with the young players that are there we can't see a project where we see these young players are coming in and I know there's this thing like oh the first season you need to work with just 14 players so that they get your system and then but come on that's why you have a, a group a core like use the squad to your advantage make them deliver for you and uh, those are the few things that I want to talk about. You know, when you talk about the advantages of Sarri, is that you know he comes in and brings this philosophy, he brings an attacking brand of football that we all want to see as fans. And you know, he's a good guy. He unites that uh, dressing room really well. I think uh, maybe if he's given time, probably next season with uh, some more additions to the squad and just release some of these odd players, some of these dead wood, and just begin a project you know begin a project and we'll see how it goes but right now it doesn't look very good at least sorry should make us optimistic at least we want to see a project we want to see a little bit of uh, flexibility in his tactics and he needs to be more flexible and uh, we can only hope for the best i mean we can't continue sucking managers we can't continue the same trend of just uh, this manager comes in after a short period get him out this manager comes in after a short period get him out and i think uh we need to be patient with him first of all you know and i believe you know uh sorry is not he's not a manager that's going to stay at chelsea forever he's not, he's not going to stay at chelsea for four or five years i think if he's going to stay long probably maximum three years if he finishes his contract but i think it's just a manager that starts that uh, attacking football philosophy you don't want to just win trophies he, anyhow you know want to win trophies uh in a good way and having a philosophy you know you can look at clubs like uh barcelona i want to see a consistent uh consistently they're always among uh, among the best team uh in europe you know they're always among us the best teams in europe consistently and when you look at them when they're targeting players it's, it's not like they're hesitating and saying oh, should we, tag, should we go for this? Should we go for this? It's like every time they're targeting players, they know the area where they need a player in because they have this philosophy. Even when a manager comes in at Barcelona, even look at Valverde. Valverde is literally uh, what's it, a pragmatic manager, but he comes in, he knows that Barcelona has a philosophy. He has to continue that philosophy of good attacking football. And it's like that. You know, once this philosophy is kick starts, is kick started, you know, we can then plan, you know, forward. You know, if Sarri stays for like uh, maybe two or three years, puts in a philosophy, you have an attacking money, uh, brand of football, we have an identity, we can then bring on uh, managers like Frank Lampard or maybe Luis Enrique or we don't know which other good managers will come up in the next two, three years. And, you know, it, it just builds well for the club. And I think everyone should just support Sarri right now, but Sarri should help himself. I think right now is kind of not helping himself that much and i think sorry you should just look at it just be a little bit more tactical flex, flex flexible tactically you know and just you know just make some twitches sometimes you know some in-game management and all of that but you know i can't say much i'm sorry this video has to go this long but i hopefully uh, you people watch it until the end so this is the opinion heart just hit the subscribe you know it's a new channel Chelsea channel but not just Chelsea I talk about a lot of things but uh, mostly Chelsea uh, football related you know and just hit the subscribe button you know help me grow and uh, press the like like button for this channel uh, for this video and just uh, click on that bell notification so that you get notified every time I'm on so this is your boy Patrick Chambeshi the opinion art signing out